About eight years ago, I was in New York for a month. And two of my brothers, Victor and Lawrence, came up and spent two weeks with me in New York City. They checked into the same hotel. They wanted to see everything they could within two weeks. And I bought them 14 shows. And sometimes they went even to an afternoon show. They wanted to see everything in the crowded two weeks. But the one thing my brother Lawrence wanted to see was the new presentation of Aida. Well, the paper said it was sold out from the very moment that it was stated a new presentation, same music, naturally, the same score, but new scenery, something new about it. And this captured the imagination of all opera lovers, and they all wanted to see Aida. The one thing he wanted to see was Aida. But the papers had huge big ads. Not one seat is available. Come down and buy seats for the other shows. And this was the old opera house around 40th Street and Broadway. It ran from Broadway to 7th, the old Metropolitan. So this morning we set out. I said, it doesn't really matter. I said, let us go. We have to go down and have lunch anyway. We will go and just see. We got there, and these huge big signs on the outside, no seats for Aida available. And they were plastered all over the Metropolitan. I went in, and there were three lines leading towards the three uh, windows, selling tickets for the entire season. And there was no seat for Aida. I got into the first line, it was a very long line, then I saw the third line from me moving more rapidly than the first and the second. So I moved over to that line. Then we all moved rapidly forward. As we got to the window, and seemingly no hope of getting tickets, but before I left my hotel room, I simply assumed that I had the tickets for my two brothers. I didn't want to go. They wanted to see it. So I assumed that I gave them the tickets. I got into this line and we moved rapidly towards the window. As we got there to the window, a tall blonde man, he was about, oh, he must have been six, I'm um, five eleven, he must have been about six four. He stretched his hand up over my head and diverted the ticket seller as he asked the question, why one in front of me is buying seats not for Aida, because that's completely sold out. He is buying two other seats for some other opera. Then. He departed after he diverted the man's attention, and this man pushed on some bills under the window. And then, as the teller looked at the money, and this man is at the door now, the tall, tall, blonde fellow. And he gave this man the ticket, and then suddenly he said, well, he only gave me three dollars. He should have given me, and he mentioned the money he should have given me. At that, he was bewildered, the teller was bewildered. I turned around and I screamed at that tall blonde. I said, sir, I screamed so loudly he couldn't stop but be attentive. He turned around and I said, come back here. You're wanted. He came back like a little child being led by the nose. He came back and he said, what's wrong? And the man said, this is all that he gave me. Two one dollar bills. 
said, oh, no, he didn't. He gave you two things. Then I said, no, you didn't. I was standing right here. I saw what you did. You gave him two one-dollar bills. That's all that you gave him. The man is flabbergasted. He was so completely dumbfounded, he didn't know what to do. I said, I am standing here. I saw exactly what was done. Then he opened up his purse, and here was a stack of ones, and he had a $20 bill and two tens. He said to the man, when will you discover your mistake? Because I gave you two tens. And the man said to him, at the end of the season. And with that, it was closed. And the man then took out the money and paid for the ticket and took back his two ones. Then I say to him, I want two seats for Aida tonight. And I want them in the horseshoe circle. I want them center. He said, yes, sir. And he took from what is called the VIP. He always, they always keep a few out. Though the house is sold out, they always keep a few seats for those who are coming called the very important people. Well, I am certainly not a very important person. But I saved him from the loss of $20. And he quickly took the two seats out and said to me, $20. I gave him the $20, went back and gave the two seats to my brothers. Now, a state called a thief. These two men have chosen to be thieves in their world. They're con men. It's perfectly all right. God made everything for its purpose, even the wicked, for the time of trouble. Read that in the 16th chapter, the fourth verse of Proverbs. He made everything for its purpose, even the wicked, for the day of trouble. The day of trouble may not be a war. I was troubled. How to get these tickets? That's a moment of trouble. And I simply assumed that I had them. And I simply played my part in my imagination before I left my hotel room. That my brothers are going to see this show this night of Aida. The new presentation of Aida. Then two who have already given themselves over to the state of a thief. They had to actually come right into the line. I took the first line. Then I moved over to the third line because I saw it moving more rapidly. So he comes over to the third line and plays his part beautifully. If he had not done what he did, I would not have received those tickets because I am not a very important person. But the man looked me in the eyes and said, here is an honest man. As far as he is concerned, I am an honest man who saved him from losing $20. And so he quickly took out the two seats. I paid for them, naturally, he didn't give them to me. I was willing to pay for my seats, but you couldn't buy them. All over the place, sold out, sold out, sold out, all over the Metropolitan Opera. You could paste it on the walls, and there's a huge big ad in the paper, Our Ida is sold out. And I went that day and got those seats right in the circle. In center row for my two brothers, because one man played his part beautifully. He has given himself over to a con man. He finds it easier to make a living being a con man. <coughs> there are those who are pickpockets. There are schools that teach people to be pickpockets. Do you know that? They come right out of the school and go into a profession. All right, that's their part. They play that part. Now you play your part beautifully, and one of them can be instrumental in getting you what you want in this world. So I wanted two seats for Aida. Were it not for a con man in that world, 
I would not have had those two seats. So he comes into the line where I was in the line. He comes forward. And just as I got to the ticket window, he puts his hand over my head to divert the man's attention. And the one in front of me, who is buying two seats, not for I either, because you can't get them. He is buying two seats for something else. And he puts out two dollar bills instead of two tens. And then this man starts, and I turn around as though I was inspired. I was my full voice. I said, sir, come back here. He had to come back. So he came on back just like a little child and stood next to me and he looked down at me. He wouldn't dare budge. When I said, you didn't give him anything more than what he's, what he's showing you now. You give him exactly what he's showing you. Because I was here and I stood next to you. He was helpless. He couldn't hit me. He was many inches my height. I'm 5'11", and he may be about 6'5 or more. A strong, strapping blonde. But he was impotent in my presence when I called him back. He only played the part. So should I not forgive him? There are infinite states in this world. And all you have to do is forget states. You play your part, and every state necessary to make your part come to fulfillment will be present at the moment that you need it. 